Some of the most famous words of our Blessed Mother are the words uh, from her Magnificat. She says, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You see, the Blessed Virgin Mary, she was spiritually alive. She was spiritually awake. Now, each one of us, we have an immortal spiritual soul. We too are spiritual. Now, if there are some philosophers or theologians here, you're saying, well, technically we don't have a soul. We are a soul. And more technically, the proper thing to say is we are an embodied soul. You're an embodied soul, uh, a spiritual embodied soul which is immortal, and we too are supposed to be spiritually alive and awake. And little ways we can see, or signs that we're somewhat spiritually awake and alive, is when we find ourselves, you know, feeling the peace of the Lord. Maybe we've been struggling, we take a prayer time and, ah, oh, I, feel, I feel peace. Or being filled with gratitude. Just being filled with gratitude, being thankful, being filled with the joy of the Lord, causing us to thank and praise the Lord. Like, atheists don't do that. Like, an atheist doesn't just start praising and thanking the Lord when things go well. No, I mean, they don't believe in God. And, and, it, Again, the, the person who's spiritually awake, we, we're in tune to, to, to our own spirits, and our spirits are alive, and this manifests itself in different ways. And again, the most simple ways is just experiencing this gratitude or this joy or, you know, or referring to the Lord, you know, I kind of felt the Lord tell me, oh, now's not the time to do this. Like, this is something a spiritual person can say and, and knows. And so again, we should, each one of us, we should be attuned to spiritual things, including the reality of God's holy angels. In the readings today, or in the, the gospel today, um, we hear mention of the angels, you know, the angel that came to, to Mary and Joseph and gave the name for the child. The shepherds were visited by the angels, given details. The angels they p play a significant role in salvation history, in, in the story of our faith. The angels are there, and again, we should have a, a sense of God's holy angels. Now, I want to tell you something today about your guardian angel. You know, each one of you has a guardian angel. The Lord Jesus refers to this when he says their angels look upon the Father uh, in, in heaven. Uh, we were assigned a guardian angel, and what I want to tell you, among other things, about your guardian angel is your guardian angel, oh, he loves you. Your guardian angel um, has always been with you. From the time he was assigned to you, from the first moments of conception, um, when you were asleep, when you were an infant, all your whole life, your guardian angel was watching over you. Your guardian angel knows you, and your guardian angel, again, loves you so much. Mystics, when you hear about mystics describing meeting their guardian angel, they say, it's like, I never felt so loved. <laughs> like, my guardian angel loves me so much and knows me knows me more than anyone else knows me. And that's just the reality with our, our guardian angel. And part of the love that our guardian angel has for us is that you kind of belong to your guardian angel. Now, it does, I'm not saying the, you, the guardian angel owns you because he doesn't. It's the, the, the guardian angel can say, you are mine by way of entrustment. You were entrusted to your guardian angel. So again, this love that your guardian angel has for you, it's, there's kind of a sense of, oh, this is, this is my child, or this, this, is, this is my soul, the one I was called to care for. And the point is, we have no idea how much 
God loves us in so many wonderful and mysterious ways. We have no idea of our wonderful dignity as children of God. And included in this is the love that the Blessed Virgin Mary has for each one of us. Oh, we could go into another long speech about this wonderful love. Again, we were entrusted to our Blessed Mother, and oh, does she love us. In other words, the love of our Blessed Mother is just, it's beyond description. And that doesn't even begin to describe the love of the God who makes, made us. And again, this, this love of God is, is, is just beyond our wildest uh, imaginations. And again, the point is, is as we begin a new year and celebrate Mary, the mother of God, our mother, and celebrate just the wonders of God in the, in the Christmas story that we continue to reflect on. I mean, t tonight I'm, um, you know, mentioning the reality of the guardian angel. We could talk about St. Joseph and just so many things. But the point is, is we are children of God, and boy, does he want to bless us. And that's one of the key themes in the scriptures tonight, God's desire to bless. Now, when we begin a new year, you know, typically we might kind of reflect on the last year and think about the next year, make resolutions and all that. And I want to promise you two things. The upcoming year is going to have a lot of ordeals and trials because the Lord promises that. He says, my child, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for an ordeal. Scripture also says we must pass through many trials to enter the kingdom of God. But more important than that, so we need to accept the trials, the struggles. But more important than that is the Lord, he promises to bless us and oh, he will if we let him. And this is a more important reality. This is a reality we meet, need to cling to more tightly. A, a person of faith, oh, they get this. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good year because my God is a good God. He's an awesome God. And oh, he loves to bless me. He loves to spoil me. He is so, so good to me. Even in the trials and struggles and ordeals, he is doing a wonderful work. He spoils each one of us. So again, as we begin this new year, I want you to know that God made you wonderfully and you have no idea how much love and care you're surrounded with. The Blessed Mother, the Guardian Angels, your patron saint loves you more than you could ever imagine and so on. You're loved, you're blessed, you have a destiny and this coming year, it's going to be a good, wonderful, awesome year and believe this, you know, prepare for the Lord's blessings. They say the Lord gives the most blessings to people who receive the blessings with gratitude and, uh, and, and, and just, you know, thank the Lord for the blessings. So even as you begin this year, thank the Lord for what he's going to do. And I want to end my homily by inviting you to turn to the, next to the person next to you and say to that person, it's going to be a good year.